great expense. Uh, I've been sent to the vaults in Edinburgh. As you can see, this is uh, my place for the night. Uh, unfortunately, the funds didn't allow our um, whiskey maester to come to Edinburgh with me. Uh, there was something to do with COVID or, as well. I'm not too sure what it is. So Hugh yeah. is uh, sitting back at the, at the house and I'm going to hand over to Hugh. I'll pass you over to Hugh uh, now and he'll go through the finer details. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. Uh, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, this uh, rather unusual whiskey tasting. It's not just a malt whiskey tasting, it's an international whiskey tasting of malt whiskies, all single malts. The fact that you're here probably would suggest that you're already whiskey drinkers, so I don't need to explain the difference between a blend and a malt. Uh, but if anybody needs to know, uh, there'll be time for you to ask any questions. Um, we are honoured, <laughs> we are honoured tonight, not only by the presence of the the birthday boy himself, President David, but also first daughter Jane, and uh, also a special welcome to Charlie's friend John and Susan Martin. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'd also like to thank Rod for his eclectic selection. Uh, you can tell it's obviously his because there's a Welsh whiskey in there. <laughs> so, there we are. Um, you've all probably seen and read uh, Hugh's hints for the evening, and I, I won't go over them all again, but I'll uh, highlight a few uh, things as we go along. First of all, I, I, I assume you've all got your glass. This is my glass. This is a whisky tasting glass. It's a, a, a special tulip shape. And it's a tulip shape so you can swill it and nose it. But anyway, any glass will do. Even an old tin mug will do. The main thing is you're here and I hope you enjoy the, the evening. The way we'll present it to you is um, Rod will display the bottle that you're about to taste and it's colour coded so you know which of your miniatures we're going to do. Even I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, and um, I'll talk you through it. And then I'll shut up and I'll leave you for five minutes just to enjoy and savour. And while that's going on, Rod will show you a short video uh, relevant to that particular whisky. And mm -hmm. That's how the evening is going to go. Plenty of time. There's no rush. Uh, good malt whiskey should be savoured. It's not a shot in a discotheque. It's to be savoured. Right, would you show the first bottle, please? We've given you a card and uh, you can make your notes. It's not a competition. There's no prizes. Uh, it, it's just for you to note what you've been tasting, what you uh, thought of it, and uh, particularly the taste, the aroma, of course, and the taste, and the, the after finish, the, uh, the lingering effect. And if you want, you can give it a score. And I'd be interested to hear at the end of the, the session what you felt you enjoyed the most. So enjoy. So we're off to the the Valleys, and this is a, a Welsh whisky, the Penderin Celt. This is a 41% alcohol by volume, and that's how we measure alcohol strength in this country. And um, this is one of a range of Welsh single malt whiskies. Uh, and um, it comes from the Brecon Beacons National Park area of Wales. Uh, the distillery itself, sorry, the, this particular whisky was launched on St David's Day in 2004 uh, at a ceremony attended by the Prince of Wales. Uh, Welsh, his, Welsh whisky has a history and uh, I, I discovered that the, the Evan Williams bourbon, which is very popular in America, was started by a Welsh immigrant. So they get around these Welsh people, as we know. So 
Let's take our first sample. Uh, what colour is this, Rod? You sorry it's to interrupt. The, which which colour whisky are we drinking? It's the, it's the red. Yes, yeah, yeah. right, the red. I, I was just asking. Thank you. I'm going to suggest uh, uh, a little mm -hmm. technique for you. I, I have a friend in, in the trade who's um, played quite a few whisky tastings I've been at over the years, and this is his way of doing it. His name is Callum, and he lives in Stirling, and uh, he's far more knowledgeable than I am. So his suggestion is you treat it like an, a, a vintage cognac. You swirl it around in the glass, let it breathe, nose it, not mm -hmm. a, a gentle nosing. So and you'll start to you'll start to capture the flavours. Yeah. Now the the uh, the distillers suggest a vanilla and orange zest blend with. Uh, a touch of coast peat wafting in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, neat, but before you add any water, just take a wee sip and just. just a laugh of Let it fill your mouth with the, the aroma and the taste. And you're doing that for two reasons. One is to get the full <laughs> flavour of the whisky and also to decide if it could benefit from having a, a little water. Now, my friend Callum suggests that uh, most malt whiskies benefit from having a little water. The purists say you should drink it neat. He says sometimes, most times, oftentimes, it's a little water that helps. He says that it refreshes and relaxes the whisky. And he likens it to walking into your garden after a shower of rain. President David doesn't have a garden. He can just walk out into the street. Uh, and your garden's fresher after the rain. So, uh, if you're going to add some water, just add a little. Don't drown it. And, uh, and enjoy. And meanwhile, you can have a bit more. will show us a, a short video. Some unique things about Penderin. It uses unique yeah. stills, which produces yeah. a flavoursome spirit at an industry high of 92% ABV. It's very creative with its wood management. It has an all-women distilling team. And finally, it's in Wales. Wales has a history of distilling, but Penderyn was the first Welsh distillery in over a hundred years. The original Welsh whisky company made this. But where is that distillery? And what is there today? We now head to Vron Goch near Bala, 120 miles due north in that direction. This is where the original distillery once stood. But as you can see, there's nothing left. This is what it looked like. The Welsh Whiskey Company was founded here in 1889, and it cost 10 million pounds in today's money. It was an ambitious project intended to challenge the Scottish and Irish whiskies. It had a railway station, commodious malt house, malt kilns, a peat store, and extensive offices. In 1891, Queen Victoria visited, and on the 26th of July, 1895, the Welsh Whiskey Company received a warrant, and Royal Welsh Whiskey was born. It was, however, hampered by the temperance movement inside Wales, and unlike Penderyn, became a curiosity outside of Wales. And in April 1903, the company was wound up. It later became a prisoner of war camp, but that's another story. Even though the actual distillery is gone, a few things remain. This was the distillery manager's house. This was the head office. This was the station. And this is the last brick. Little is known of the whiskey itself. But adverts at the time stated that it was a five-year-old peated malt and rather fancifully said, 
Welsh whisky is the most wonderful whisky that ever drove a skeleton from the feast or painted landscapes in the brain of man. Bottles of this original Welsh whisky now sell for thousands of pounds. To celebrate their pioneering predecessors, Penderyn have created a new Icons of Wales edition. It's called Royal Welsh Whisky. Distilling in Wales was a lost art, but not anymore. Echida. Very good video. <laughs> any any um, initial thoughts about the the Welsh whisky, the Pendere and Celt? Yes, Hugh. I would like to say that I don't think the Welsh or the Irish have got much to worry about. Got to be uh, <laughs> I'll just mute mute Charlie's screen. It's all right, Rod. I, 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 had, I had a couple of sips and I poured it away. I'm so sorry. Oh. Not my thing at all. Oh, dear. <laughs> my instinct. A strong vanilla tang to it. I think um, I should have maybe have warned you that the, um, the kind of tasting notes that you get from distillers uh, uh, are produced by marketing departments. I think it's a young whisky. I don't think it's very old. I'd be interested to know how old it is. The yes, oh, it was oh. um, the it was launched in two thousand four. Yeah. There's also a trend, as I'm sure you'll know, Bob, for uh, particular uh, editions being issued by distilleries that are not yeah. aged. They're not dated. No, they're not. Strange business. Yeah. Ah, there's a dog. <laughs> At least he liked the whiskey. No. <laughs> Any other comments before me? Oh, that's harsh. That's harsh, Rod. <laughs> Any other oh, comments before we move on? Anyone? What's the point system? Is it two to five or two to ten? Or? Um, I'm not keeping oh, score, so I, I, I'm um, not very sure. Whatever you think. I think it's one to five. One to five, yeah. Yeah, because there's only the five whiskies. Right. So, uh, I mean, I don't. I, I've all that vanilla stuff and all that sort of thing means not a lot to me, but it tastes like it quite a peaty whiskey. Well, it's it's it's, it's um, stored in peat. What they call peat casks. I don't want to. I don't want to influence anyone. But uh, at the end of each. Uh, Dram, I, I'll give you Hugh's view on the subject, and uh, it's quite a pleasant whiskey. It's uh, uh, got a, a, a nice aftertaste, it's not bitter, and uh, it's quite nice. I was slightly put off by how pale it was. A pale, ah. <laughs> yeah. but, but I enjoyed it. Uh, it well, than I expected to, from the colour. Yeah. One of the things I've learned over the years going, going, going to whiskey tastings is you can't tell anything by the colour. I used to think that the darker the colour, the stronger it would be and the more peaty it would be. But that's <laughs> not the case at all. <laughs> so it is, it's quite that's misleading. My idea, but... You, my son was in the Water of Life Society at Edinburgh University and they had tasting competitions against other universities. And it was the women that were the best tasters. They, they beat the men hands down in, in competition. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it not a fact that um, the, the, the shortage of sherry drinkers has reduced the number of sherry barrels or casks that come across yes. to be used? Yes, it is. Therefore, yeah. We're probably yeah. using more bourbon they are. based yeah. casks or virgin oak, which has yeah, led yeah. to a yeah. lightning of whiskey. Yeah, it's uh, the the barrels contribute a lot to the, the actual colour and uh, there, there is much less sherry being drunk in the UK 
uh, for the last 20, 30 years, I would guess, and uh, hence the shortage of barrels. More and more of them are using bourbon barrels. And uh, uh, we'll be seeing something about that later on, I think. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that, actually. I was, um, I was, I was very much against the thought of a Welsh whisky, I have to say. Um, but a, I rather enjoyed it. I'm, I'm, actually, it's, I think it's better without any water in it. Mm. Mm. I think it gets sweeter, a little sweeter with water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it does, but I quite, I thought it was, um, I thought it was very palatable. Um, yeah. Bit of peat. Maybe, uh, maybe that was my mistake because I added a couple of drops of water to it. Well, I think my sample was too small because Hugh McCree has been drinking for the last last seven to fifteen minutes, and he's obviously got a bigger sample than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I keep rumble them until they point out that there's still a little bit left in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Time to refresh. That's why you brought your water. Um, Rod, you'll need to help me. What what uh, what is green again? This is the Bushmills. Oh, Bushmills. Oh, right. Right. Green bottle. Yeah, green bottle, of course. Bushmills. Yeah. Hey, Bushmills. The suggestion is that there might be a hint of banana, banana skins, fruity chocolate pudding. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not quite There's sure where to get that from. <laughs> anyway, the Bushmills distillery, while, while you're sampling, I'll just tell you a bit about it. As the name suggests, it's from the town of Bushmills in County Antrim, uh, founded in 1608. So it's one of the oldest legal distilleries in the UK. They get their water from the River Bush at St. Columbus Rill. Uh, and they claim to be the oldest licensed distillery in the world. Mm. They do a, a range of malts now, uh, a, a 10 year old, which is our sample tonight, a 16 and a 21 year old. Mm. They use uh, sherry barrels or bourbon barrels, as we do in Scotland. Uh, and as you'll notice, Irish whiskey has an E. Irish and American whiskies have an E. Uh, Scotch, Canadian, Japanese, and even Welsh don't have a knee. Oh, interesting. The distillery is owned by a, a Mexican company, oh. Casa Cuervo. So it's not even Irish anymore. But this happens all the time. Most of the distilleries we'll be seeing tonight are owned by other people. So, Slange. What is the proof? What is the proof of that? It's um, 40 proof, is it? We had, we had a bottle of 16 at one point. It was yeah. a, mm-hmm. love, a lovely little scenario. Yeah. And I bought three bottles of whiskey at the distillery. And there was this charming Irish lady who served me, who said she was going to put them in two carrier bags, just to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that the um, tasting notes might say banana skins. Mm-hmm. And I would have said, oh, what a load of tosh. But having tasted it with water, um, after tasting it without water, um, I can see where they're getting at with the banana, banana flavour. Hey, mm-hmm. when did you last taste the banana skin? <laughs> I was going to say, look at that. Well, a tap banana. <laughs> this place tells the story of Irish whiskey. <laughs> The Bushmill story is written on the rain and the rocks and across the hills and streams here on our wild north coast. And this is our original, what we stand for, what we're known for. A mellow whiskey with delicate fruity notes, triple still for that distinctive, smooth, elegant Bushmill finish. On the nose, there's vanilla, toasted oats, caramel notes. Take a sip. And straight away, you get that characteristic Bushmill smoothness. Hints of vanilla and a rich fruitiness on the tongue. Lingering honey sweetness coming through. Because our single malt whiskey is at the heart of the blend, there's a beautifully balanced complexity on the palate. A taste like no other. 
Mm. Mm. He didn't mention any bananas, Gans. No, he didn't, no. It's in the notes. He flipped up, didn't he? He didn't have the same notes I've got. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe maybe the boat hadn't arrived at that point. Mm. I got a definite Hammond's marzipan type of taste from that. Mm -hmm. That might be the bit of the Christmas pudding, right enough. (laughs) (laughs) Any other thoughts? What about the ladies? First daughter, Jane. Oh, heavens, put on the spot. It it does seem quite another another sweet one. And and, (laughs) as Dad says, the powder suggestion works quite well, I think. By the time they said banana skins, you begin to think, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Any other thoughts, anyone? Can I ask a a, a question? Because um, I don't know where I picked this up, but uh, you know how when you go around Scottish distilleries, they all say, well, this this whiskey is only made here and all this sort of thing. It's very, very special, all to do the water. Uh, I heard once that... uh, Irish whiskey, uh, essentially, Irish whiskey, they make everything, all the different types of Irish whiskey at one distillery, just on a batch basis. Um, does anybody think that's true? As, I mean, as I've well, made that. Bushmills makes Jemisons. Yeah, they do, because they were. you could buy Jemisons when we were there. Right, okay. Yeah, so oh, you could be right, okay. but... Yeah. Alistair has, has joined. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Alistair. Very good. Apologies. Apologies. No quite problem. Quite a boys, boys brigade. That's good. And a, good. And a slight diary clash. Yes. Yeah. There's no catching up to do, Alistair. Yeah, well, I'll good. do my best. I'll do my best. Get on the air, Alistair. We're going to sit here and watch you drink two drowns straight on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, after, after two hours of Boys Brigade, you could do that with with ease. <laughs> yeah. uh, comments? You, I thought the marzipan I got that somebody else mentioned. And a slight... I see John's making notes there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just worried there's a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> they would have to have a prize, John. We don't do prizes. <laughs> yeah. Hugh, have you drunk the contents of both bottles so far? Have I? Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Are you not supposed to? <laughs> They're only Liz, bottles. Liz, Liz. And does the community singing start, Liz, Hugh? Liz, <laughs> Liz, you can't tell from my cultured accent, but I'm from Glasgow. Oh, really? <laughs> Did I say more? <laughs> the, 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 I just I just think there's an aftertaste in, in, in all Irish whiskey and this this one um, maybe not as much but I I don't think it could be something that I would want to have you know something I would have regularly as it were um, as, a, as a malt yeah anyway we're moving on to orange which is where are we going now Rod yeah four roses four roses okay we're going across oh. the Atlantic right Okay, four roses. Has anybody heard of four roses? No. 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 A few of us, yeah. Just a few of us, yeah. Uh, We're in Kentucky. Uh, And four roses uh, was founded by a man called Paul Jones Jr. And he was apparently smitten by a very lovely young lady who he proposed to. She said she would let him know her answer later on when they were attending an evening ball. And if she was going to accept his advances, she would wear a a corsage of four roses. Presumably she said yes, because he (laughs) renamed his distillery Four Roses. This is not dead in the South. Uh, This is a hundred proof. the Americans use a different a categ- um, categorization. Uh, this is approximately 40 uh, ABV in our, in our money. And, uh, and this is a bourbon malt. Uh, it's a bourbon whiskey. 
They say it's plummy and fruity with lots of character. And then they contradict themselves by then going on to say it makes a fantastic hot toddy or a Kentucky lemonade. Now, they've just broken one of my golden rules that you don't put things like that into a malt whiskey. So, um, uh, <laughs> there we are. Um, yes. Yeah. And have a drink of water. Just keep the water going. That's just, that's just bourbon. So, let's have a wee nose. No, I think it's the same. I think it's called vanilla. vanilla. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Should be rich and fruity. No. It says here. Oh, rich. It's sweet. Toffee yeah. and vanilla. Anyway. Yeah, very massive vanilla. Mm. Big, really big vanilla hit. Spices, very cherries, cool. vanilla. Yeah. yeah. Vanilla. <laughs> What's this, what's this whiskey made from? It's a bourbon whiskey. Yeah. See the people, see how we, we always have the, the bourbon cast for, for whiskey. Where, mm -hmm. where did the bourbon people get their cast, their cast from? They use new barrels. New? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. From China. American oak. <laughs> I think there's a there's an American law. I think it's I think it's law in America that 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 casks have to be made. It was it was a law I think that was introduced to in, to to enhance the lumber industry. Mm. That casks could only be used once. Yeah. The distillery is in a town called Lawrence Bay in Kentucky, uh, which was built in 1910. It's Owned today by the Kirin Brewery Company of Japan, <laughs> but it's a it's a, <coughs> a a good old boy bourbon whiskey. Does anyone know what the the nickname of Kentucky is? What what the nickname of the state of Kentucky is? All states have nicknames. It's the Bluegrass State. It's the Bluegrass State. Well done. Mm -hmm. California is the Golden State. Florida is a sunshine state, Hawaii is the Aloha state, and so on. Is there any age to this? No, it's not aged. <clears throat> I must admit, um, I, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I identified it as a bourbon straight away. Yeah. And um, I, I like it. It's a bit on the sweet side. Yeah. I think I think I might enjoy it uh, the way the Americans enjoy it, which is with lots of ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I thought you were going to say with Coke there. <laughs> as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of Jack Daniels, also. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You did you know? Yes. You actually, we were on a holiday in America. We went to the Jack Daniels distillery just as something to do, mm. but you can't get a sample at the distillery. Because it's in a dry county. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, I think I know that actually. Yeah, yes, I've heard that. Yeah, it was only in the nineties that they were allowed to actually sell bottles yeah. at the distillery. Mm -hmm. But what it did mean is that, unlike everything else in America, the tour was free. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my name is Ryan Ashley. I am the Director of Operations here at Four Roses Distillery. And uh, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the distillery. And that includes everything from the raw materials uh, being chosen and coming in to the distillate that leaves to go to our Cox's Creek uh, warehouse facility. What makes Four Roses uh, just different from other bourbon distilleries and so unique is first that we use two separate mash bills. We have two separate recipes. In addition to that, we have five proprietary yeast strains. So when you apply those different yeast strains to the different mash bills, uh, we create 10 uniquely different bourbons. And those bourbons are cooked, fermented, distilled, and aged separately. So they really are 10 distinctly different bourbons. The other part of that that makes us so unique and so different from any other bourbon distillery is the fact that we utilize single story warehousing for our bourbons. So we get a much more consistent temperature throughout the year, meaning that the bourbons are going to age very consistently, very evenly, um, and at the highest quality possible. Mm. 
you think of Ryan? Uh, quite a smooth character, wasn't he? <laughs> good voice. A good yeah. voice, yes. More than can um, be said about the whiskey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if they've got uh, five different yeast, yeast strains and two different uh, mash processes, surely it's a blend and not a mop. Well, he, he's he's talking about the Four Roses range. All right. What, what we are sampling is their malt. Right. Uh, and it's a single malt. Which I think it is a protected name. What? Malt? No. No, the, the name single malt. Bob, Bob might be able to keep me right here. Oh, it just uh, has to be made at the one distillery. Single distillery. Right. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were saying, Hugh, that you're a Glasgow man, and my grandfather was a Glasgow man. And um, when I was in Australia many years ago, in fact, the summer of 76, when you were all enjoying a sunshine, I was in Australia. And um, the, uh, the, one of the guys in the Australian Army was introducing me to Australian whiskey. And he asked me, um, <laughs> how, how, he gave me some and he said, how do you enjoy it? And I, I explained to him, having tasted it, that my grandfather from Glasgow taught me all about whiskey. And he said, I said, he, his explanation was the quality of the whiskey was where it hits you. A really, really good whiskey hits you in the stomach. And a not quite so good whiskey hits you in the kind of chest. And and uh, he said, so where does this whiskey hit you? I said, the teeth. You'll sleep well tonight, Q. That'll be a change. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is your yellow sample. The yellow. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Shelby. Anise. This is Yamazaki. What good is it? Right. Yamasaki. This is not one of Graham Russell's motorbikes. This is uh, a Japanese whiskey. Much scoffed at, sneered at by, by oh, Scots, yeah. but uh, uh, it's. Uh, uh, an interesting whiskey. Japan traditionally uh, was not noted for yeah. spirit drinking or producing. Uh, it was wine. Sake, of course, is a wine. Uh, and uh, the Japanese really only came into distilling in the late 19th and uh, early 20th century. Yes. Now, we're going to the Yamasaki the distillery. Uh, which uh, was uh, well, I think it's a lot of it oh yes, nineteen twenty four, nineteen twenty four. It was the first <laughs> distillery in Japan, and it's now owned by the Santori Beam uh, Group. Uh, they used oak casks, Japanese oak, Mizunara. The casks uh, and um, they talk of strawberries, dried fruits, floral notes, fragrant sandalwood, maybe even coconut. So let's have a wee nose. It's got a very soft um, nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's, it's not unpleasant, but it doesn't kind of jump at you. Is it reminiscent of any of the others we've had tonight? No, uh, no I would say it's completely different. And I've never tasted it, and so this is quite a joy to mm -hmm. try it. Of water in it. It's pretty like uh, Scott. 
How about the aftertaste? It's quite light. Yeah, it's got sweet berries in it. And yeah. Yeah, it's got a sweet aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It sort of lingers a bit, doesn't it? Lingers mm -hmm. on the palate. It's very, very, very balanced. Very balanced. Well made, I think. Well made. Mm. On the first, on the first taste, I'm actually hugely impressed. Yeah, I'd like. Good for <clears throat> very smooth. Better without water. <clears throat> very, very smooth. It's kind of towards a liqueur without being a liqueur. Yeah. Our founder selected this area to build a distillery. Good and rich water and good climate as well. The whiskey is itself uh, blessed by uh, Japan's uh, rich nature. So, uh, the craftsmanship and uh, such kind of uh, nature in harmony. Blenders. We also in charge of the whiskey inventory management and, uh, and research of whiskey process development as well to create new and uh, high quality of whiskies. As a team, we access about 30,000 samples per year, which means more than 100 samples per day average. We focus on the quality of the each samples. Sometimes we, we can find very unique and high standard quality for all the individual casks. But sometimes we have also have to know that uh, very young whiskey or a, a bit of a difficult type of whiskey, but uh, we need to find out uh, each whiskey role for the branding. So that's the most basic uh, blender's work. Yamazaki is very important as a core whiskey pressed by Japan's rich natures. Because of such a long history, almost 100 years, it's quite unique. Most important is the quality of whiskey in order to keep that, that tradition. Very good. It's interesting that he said that uh, it had a long history, almost 100 years. <laughs> 1745. <laughs> yeah. And of course, again, oh, there's Robert, 100 whiskies a day tastes. Mm -hmm. He said the other now, 100 whiskies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just he just has one nip each. <laughs> Aye, a big nip. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Japanese, of course, oh, mastered the art of uh, 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 mass production and uh, quality control, the quality assurance was born in Japan and uh, particularly after the Second World War and they've applied that to whiskey. 
Uh, and of course, we were seeing a, a video about the distillery, not the dram that we're drinking just now. So uh, I'll let you savour that and enjoy it. Uh, oh, uh, I forgot. Yes. It pains me to say, but I think they've got it near as much yeah. scotch as, uh, as they can. Yeah. It's, it's very good. Yeah, I was very impressed when I, I first had uh, a Satori blend uh, somewhere about the late 80s. And uh, I was very impressed. It was very good. And all I did was add a splash of water to it. And that's a blend, not a all. It was very well, impressive. I will, I will repeat what I said before. I've not had it before. And I will buy a bottle because I like that. Mm -hmm. And thank you, you. Mm. You're very welcome, Skipper. I, 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 first, I first heard of Suntory when they took over the John Player match play at Wentworth. Oh. <laughs> what was the John Player match yeah. play at the end, end of September, beginning of October? Um, that would be back in the, probably the early 80s, maybe late 70s, early 80s. Okay. That's when I first heard of Suntory. Mm. Would you? I think, I think it's got a very clean taste. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's quite bitter compared. I think suspect that's just compared to what we've had before. Um, but in, in terms of overall enjoyment, um, I think it's delightful. Mm -hmm. I think I think they've they've absolutely got that right. Mm -hmm. my, it's my favourite so far. Um, and there is no aftertaste at all in it, I think. Um, I, I have, I've, tried, I've tried it both with water and without. Mm. Um, it doesn't have much of a nose, and I'm not getting the strawberry no. and the citrus fruits, as you as no. you, you, you told us. <laughs> but um, but I, I'm certainly getting something that's... It's maybe not as flavoursome as you might expect from a malt. Um, I, I'm not getting anything, as I say, either with, with water or not. But um, thoroughly enjoyable. Mm. The Japanese still use Scotch whiskey for their blends. Oh, it's a huge part of the whiskey industry in this country. Because they use Scotch as their base for their blends. Does anyone know if the, the, the distilleries from uh, overseas no, countries uh, market um, 10 year old, 12, 15, 18 year old? Yeah, like the. Um, for the ages or? Yeah, I, I thought I had that. Um, 15 year olds, do we do older? No, the. the, the, the um, or blends. Yamazaki. Yep. Yamazaki <laughs> distillery, the, the malt that we've been sampling tonight is a non age. It's. Um, uh, uh, not sold by age. That's very much a Scotch whiskey thing, and and that's part of the sh of the the um, speciality. That's part of the um, the uh, the the mystique. You're drinking a twelve year old, a fifteen year old, eighteen year old, uh, 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 and uh, and that's a bit of Scotch mist. <laughs> Uh, the other malt distillers the don't really bother. You mm. can't call it a whiskey in Scotland unless it's spent three years in the barrel. Do the other countries have uh, limits, or don't we know? Uh, I believe they do. I, I, I couldn't be specific, but I believe they do. Uh, but it's not very long. And that's why they don't age them. What are we doing? We've reached the final tasting. Yeah. Have we already? Have you all refreshed? Yes. Yeah. Where are we going now? We're going back to Scotland. I hope. Where are we started? At home. We're all back home. Feet. Smell feet. Smell feet. Oof, yeah. West Coast, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, oh, Lafroy. Oh, oh, no. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You picked a Marmite whiskey. Not my favourite. Here we are. We're in Lafroy. Uh, where is Lafroy? Uh, 
Aí, Luiz. 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 I'm sorry, boys. <laughs> We're heading out west. <laughs> so uh, here, here we are, out in the islands, and I'm a single malt. Um, okay. 40% ABV. Uh, Lafroy do up to 30 year old. We're in the middle here. We're having a 10. Uh, and that's the most, the most popular. Uh, and probably because of the price. Uh, very old distillery, as we'll see in the video. Um, let's have a nose. David, it's it's Jen run off. Smoke. Smoking. Very smoky. Where's the, the first daughter going? Uh, Has she, she abandoned you? She has not abandoned me. She would not do that out of fear of death. But... <laughs> <laughs> she just had to go elsewhere. And oh, right. okay. and she offers her apologies, but thank you very much for uh, bringing her into the fold. Well, she's very welcome, and uh, I was hoping to get a young person's uh, view of this because this is a heavyweight. This is the mighty Lafroy. Uh, so let's have a wee nose. Yes, I'll keep that one. I don't know. Impressions. You have some if you want, I don't think so. Okay. You have it if you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with some peaty. Take it in a glass. Yeah, I'll very peaty. I'll have a very peaty. Very, very peaty. Totally some, people, from... some people would call it medicinal. Yes, it, yes, it can be. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, to more medicine. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it cures everything. <laughs> Audrey, Audrey, you mentioned TCP. Now, my favourite is Carlila, and that really, really gets um, slated and described by many as being um, TCP. So, oh, what was your favourite? Sorry, David. Carolina, from Isla. I, I yeah. think so. Best stop off the ferry. Yeah. But this, but this is more peaty and less um, medicinal if you in flavour. Yeah, my, but, mine was Le, uh, Lefroy for a while, and similarly, it was described as TCP by a, a colleague. I had to let him leave the house. <laughs> Walking. <laughs> Summed up in one word: just bliss. Yes, uh, Nick. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm uh, a big fan. Wee bit of background here. It's um, it's only forty percent. It may seem stronger, but it's only forty percent. Uh, it's described as being smoky, which it is, and 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 iodine rich. So if you're smelling or nosing medicinal things, that's where it comes from. The uh, sea. The uh, the distillery is on the banks of Loch Lathroig, an island of Isla. Um, sad to say, I haven't actually been there yet. The casks, uh, one of the, the things that you'll note is common. Sorry, two of the things are common to all of the drums we've had tonight. The water and the barrels. They've all said the same thing as the water and the barrels. The barrels here are from American oak, European oak, or Oloroso sherry barrels, uh, bourbon or sherry. And they still do that right up to date. Um, the, uh, the water, of course, they get from Lafroy. Loch. Blend is like. <laughs> you know, I'm a big fan of the Freud. As an 18 year old, I'm not sure they still do it, but the 18 year old. Oh, they do, yeah. yeah. It's much smoother. And if you like this, which I do, the eight, but the 18 is a big improvement if you want it smoother. Mm, yeah. It's uh, one of the few the few malts that I would actually drink neat or with just a drop of water because it's very, very smooth. <laughs> They're talking about uh, uh, 
The nose, they suggest, is uh, a big, smoky, muscular peat. <laughs> good, that's good. P-E-A-T. Yeah. <laughs> Spices, licorice, salt. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so uh, you can judge yourself. <laughs> Rod, can we, can we run the video, please? Well. Have a seat. We're just going to have cake, so I don't know if you want cake or are you, are you happy? A lot of people don't like it because it gets really wild here and sometimes the planes don't fly, the ferries don't sail, but that's just part of island life. The saying is if you can see Ireland, it's going to rain, and if you can't see it, it's already raining. If it's wet, it's good, because if there's no rain, there's no whiskey. <laughs> Lafroy is from the Norse name. It means the hollow by the bay. More or less, whiskey is made here the same way it was made 200 years ago. As far as I know, we're the only place in the whole of Scotland that still cuts our own peat. We still do our own floor maltings. There's only seven distilleries in the whole of Scotland still do that, and we're one of them. Traditional floor malting in Loughroy is completely different. We have to plough the floors to get the grains growing. If we didn't turn the grains, the grains would mat and the temperature would rise too quickly and destroy the enzymes. So you turn in the shovel and the grains are going through there and cooling down. It's very important that we take our time in the early stages of the malting process. After the grains have been germinated five, six days, we then transfer the grains into the kilning vessel. Once the kiln has been levelled, we head down to the peat furnace. Oh, that's why it's peat. What we really want as much smoke of that peat as possible. The smoke from the peat fire, the peat reek as we refer to it, makes its way up through the grains and the grains absorb this smokiness, which is where Lafroy gets its characteristic flavours from. Lots of things that make up the 10 year old, and one of the main ingredients is the warehousing. The warehouses sit by the sea and they get very heavily influenced by all the elements that come in. You cannot make Laphroaig spirit anywhere else, it's just a freak of nature. We mature our whiskey on Isla, we don't send any to the mainland. So that salty, iodine, kind of seaweed flavour that you get is all matured here. You can definitely taste the sea in the 10 year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone agree with that? Oh, yes. I cycled, I cycled into the distillery uh, mm -hmm. to a special tasting in the warehouse. They, he paid so much and you had four, I know the oldest man, had four different casks and uh, you got samples, very generous samples. I cycled back very wearily. I got there all right, but coming back was quite difficult. <laughs> but old Will Pouldney from Thurzo um, has a picture of a trawler on it and part of the marketing hype of old Pouldney is the saltness of the area. They might not have to stop you there. Old Pulteney's from Wick. Is it Wick? All right. Okay. <laughs> Very important. I'm from Wick. <laughs> Audrey, don't hold back. Just tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> well, you're wrong. All right. So. You're wrong quite a lot. <laughs> but we're used to it. <laughs> uh, old Pulteney is, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Audrey. Uh, part of the marketing hype has got a big salt influence. 
And here we have um, Lefroy talking about salt influence. And I just think it's interesting. I do like Lefroy. Uh, I, I have an highly favourite, which I have a voice to you. Um, but it's very, very palatable. It's very, very drinkable. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, no. else, any other comments? George, you've been very quiet tonight, son. Just taking it all in, Hugh, taking it all in. No, I've enjoyed it. Um, I have to say, I enjoyed the Welsh one. I've made my notes here. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. I enjoyed the Welsh one. Obviously, the Freud at the end there was good as well. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who, I think, who chose uh, these? You did you did you actually choose these yourself? You? No, Rod did. Rod did. Rod did. Well done. It's well, a Welsh well choice. Well done, Rod. Oh, there you guys. Go. Welsh good mixture. Mixture. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> I added a half point to the Welsh whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I take it they were on a special offer at Aldi. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, Best interest, value. The, the interesting thing will be to see with the, the bits that we didn't finish. Now, what do you think this blend is going to taste like? It's got Welsh. Oh. <laughs> it's got Lefroy. It's got everything but Bushmills. It's got everything but Bushmills in there. <laughs> oh, great. I know I've got wish... 10 glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you say that the that the Bushmills was the most popular? No. 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 Oh, no. Lefroy. Lefroy! <laughs> Oh, yeah. The test is which ones did we empty, and I've emptied uh, my Lefroy, and I've nearly emptied my Japanese Suntory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I would agree. Yeah, we're the same. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, Audrey, how how, how how would you rate how would you rate the Irish whiskey then? It was top of my list. Was it, it surprises okay. me? So what appealed yeah. to you? What appealed to me about what the Bruce, yeah. the Bush Mills? Yes. Yeah. It was just a smooth, easy drink. Um, was Jim helping you? Well, he was. He was drinking the other half of it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jim, so Jim, what was your, what was your observation? About the Bush Mills. Yeah. It was not, It was. It was similar to a Scottish malt I've tried before, but I can't put my. Uh, Finger on what it was. I think it's Glen Kinchy, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but it's a nice mellow drink. It wasn't like the uh, the but the, uh, the Kentucky one, which was mm -hmm. like a paint stripper. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I wasn't too keen on the Kawasaki one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, that was okay. But the Bushmills was no, it was a nice mellow drink, and it had and some the, nice uh, nice notes, nice flavors to it. Yeah. Ron, to be pleased that um, the Welsh didn't come bottom of our list. I should hope yeah. not, too. I should I've, hope not. I've, I've I see Linda has little... joined Steve. Uh, were you participating? Uh, she's, been, she's been tasting half of it all the way through. No, no, I'm just, just a wee, wee bit. Uh, so Maybe Linda, no Linda, what was your favourite? Oh, definitely the frog, and I would have said that at the end, actually, because I don't like peaty whiskies. But there you go. I think the uh, the Irish. But I also really like the Welsh one. Okay. Oh, just, oh really? Got a, a bottle of Lefroy <laughs> in the in the I, cupboard. I and Linda touched it. No, no. But she has a good idea. Vice President Russell, uh, any comments from you? Um, well, they're certainly all different. I think for different times times of where you are. The Lefroy, yeah, maybe you'll find a bit heavy. Uh, an after dinner drink rather than just a social drink. The Japanese whiskey was a lot more smoother for just a, a drinking, say an afternoon drink or something like that. So we also we got uh, to have talk to Charlie and Liz. What would you like to know? A summing up. Speak um, to us well, for God's sake. Bushmills is wonderful, and the Lefroy comes below the Welsh whiskey. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, well, yes. okay. I don't like peaty whiskeys at all. Ah, uh, Charlie, it's an acquired taste. You have to try harder. 
Keep brewing, keep brewing. <laughs> space sides or Rocadians. Who else have we got? Uh, John. Hugh, the president's got his hand up there. John Martin. I'll come back to I'll come back to well, you. Well, thanks very much. It was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And you're a, in the trade, a, of course, John. Well, I've been a single malt whiskey lover, yeah. But it was yeah. quite and it was really interesting tasting from these other nations. But I must have been biased, and I think Lafroy enjoyed enjoy the Japanese whiskey. I think it's well made because they've learned so much from us. Yeah. And then I think Bushmills. And then surprisingly, or I would say it's not unusual, the Welsh one came oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. oh my <laughs> man. It's not. Yeah, That's a cue for a song. And then the Four Roses, <laughs> four roses was bottom of our bottom list. Of I just felt it was just yeah. like typical American, overpowering and too, too much. <laughs> Well, any I, final I, comments? I, I would just like pass back to Rod. I would just like to say that it was a great, great evening. Um, but uh, of all the whiskies, um, the only one that um, I think has to be left to 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 the shelf is the Four Roses. I'll stick yeah, to yeah. Black Man Roses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great comment. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, for my for my last comment, I would like to say I'm trying to catch up by now. Tasting the Welsh one, which you, which I missed. Oh, right. Oh, and nice. my immediate impression is, I'm slightly surprised because it's quite good. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, yucky da then. Not yucky da. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> <a> yucky da. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Alistair on this. The Welsh, the Welsh whiskey was ra was rather good. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, um, we, we, we were privileged in, in 1990 to turn up on the 30th of December in the Macri Hotel for New Year, only to discover that Lafroig and Lagi Vulin were having their distillery party, which took place over from the 30th right through to the 2nd of January. <laughs> Mm. And um, I think, as far as I remember, from about four o'clock in the morning, my wife is still the Lagavulin snooker women's champion. <laughs> <laughs> but bizarrely, out of that evening, we discovered that the distillery workers drink black bottle whiskey, which is a blend um, lots, coming out mainly, mainly of Isla malts, and they yeah. didn't they actually steered away from the from the um, from the malts, albeit this was in 1990. Um, mm. The other thing I would say about Lefroy, that the, the Lefroy marketing video, I thought was the best of the five. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. By yes. a long way. It was absolutely on the money, perfect. And I, I know who made it as well. Um, and they're absolutely 100% on yes. that. Yes. Um, from a worldwide marketing strategy and in, in reflection of Scotland and the way that Scotland wants to portray itself from an export perspective, I think it was brilliant. Um, yeah, absolutely. better than anything else. Yeah, and, and good on them um, because yeah. you know it's going to it's going to boost our economy. So I I I, I can't stand the stuff. I'll put my oh, okay. Well, good good. Seems to have been fun. I've enjoyed being here and doing that. Um, as a as a Welshman, obviously I know very little about whiskey. Um, <laughs> but the the Lefroy, I think you've done well in identifying that as a a, a great whiskey. Uh, up until about 15 years ago, I used to think it was minging, just like you all did when you were when you were younger. And then I, I was at the at the vaults uh, in Edinburgh for a tasting, which was remarkably, as as Hugh remarked earlier on, was run by a young lady, which very knowledgeable about her whiskies. And we cut that whiskey that night about eight times, drop by drop. And I was totally amazed. We didn't have the time to do that tonight. But I think when you've got the time to take a dram of virtually any Lefroy and just cut it slowly and slowly, and the, uh, the nose you get and the different flavours you get, and there's somewhere along that line is a Lefroy that you'll say, that's a really, really... I know how to cut my... Freud, and it's about half and half and it's it's beautiful you need to go and study how to drink Welsh whiskies you've done well tonight you've improved 
<laughs> this is sacked from the whole team, uh, but we'll, we'll have bottles delivered up to Calendar to, to do that. Hooray, you hooray, just drink it when you bother. Really but, don't bother. <laughs> the, uh, what can we say? Good, good night. <laughs> good night for everybody. Thanks to everybody who bottled the whiskey, yes. shared the angel share along the way, the deliverers of the whiskey. Um, John Kilby donated tonight the, the Lafroig for us, so thank you very much to John and to Hugh for doing all of the hard work and working out yes. where we are. Um, I've had to go up to the house four times in the last week to sober him up. But he really has worked, worked really hard at it, and um, hey, I think we've had a had a good time. Good I've, got, I agree. I've got one short video left for a, a little bit of a a laugh on the way out, if I can find. <laughs> The how do you pronounce it, malt? With which some Sassanachs find fault. Or Stormlash, sea spray, smoky salt. Let's exalt Lafroig. I'll rain on heather, moss and grass. Through kiln and cask, a grain to glass. A snort, a drop, a drama class. Crack open the Lafroig. A richt rambustious amber bead. No yin for faint heart or weak need. A muckle skelp a boot the heed. Pure raj, that Lafroig. Ushkebe, name unshine booze. The nectar that the angels choose. Ambrosia, immortal muse. Bottled poetry, Lafroig. In seven pot stills by the ocean. Liquid joy, sweet peaty potion. A burning kiss of deep devotion. Ooh la la. La Freud. Taste buds flying as high as a kite, brain bursting out in fairy lights, a dock and Doris to cap the night, just one mare, La Freud. Queen of the Hebrides, golden tears, distillation, oh, two hundred years, skull, prost, salut, campai, cheers, slangeva, La Freud. Oh, well done. There we go. He's just about to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, David. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, oh, okay. So um, I've recorded. No, it didn't, didn't seem to play out there. <laughs>